Hello everybody and welcome to another video. This week we're going to be looking at making an Ultramarines bodyguard for Rebute Gilliman, Primarch of the Ultramarines and Lord Commander of the Imperium. Let's crack on. So before we begin, a little bit of context. I recently, on this channel, video in the top right, painted the Lord Commander of the Imperium, Rebute Gilliman. Now he was a great challenge to paint, but as I was painting him and looking at his rules, I realised he has one called Ultramarines Bodyguard. Now I don't own any Ultramarines, and it felt wrong to use another chapter to be his bodyguard. Whilst in the rules it's perfectly fine, it just didn't make sense narratively to me, so the entire point of this video is we're going to kitbash some veteran bodyguard for Gilliman in the form of some stern guard veterans. Now most of the time when you have Ultramarines bodyguard you have Vitrix guard which are essentially the Ultramarines version of blade guard veterans. Why didn't I go for them? Because I don't have any. I had a box of stern guard lying around, so this is what you get. Now in terms of kit bashing, we're keeping it simple and building the models up basically how they come out of the box by adding some Ultramarines iconography here and there, including the Gladius that I just put on the Sergeant, which I think is a really cool addition, especially as Sternguard can now take power weapons. Throughout this process, I'm also making liberal use of the Ultramarines upgrade sprue, which has a bunch of sculpted shoulder pad detail and a few bits and pieces we can use around the belt area. One of the things I'm nicking from the Mark VI Space Marine kit is these helmet crests. I really think Ultramarines look best when they're played as Romans, or Greco-Roman kind of inspired things, and these horsehair plumes appear a lot in Roman iconography. Now for the sergeant I'm putting it down the centre of his helmet because I view him as the highest ranking officer, and generally the higher up in the Roman class structure you went, the more likely you were to wear the horsehair plume down the centre of your helmet. I don't know the specific details, but I do know that from seeing artist renditions of the time period, and also reading many books about it. For our next Space Marine, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing as I did with the Sergeant, putting it down the centre of his helmet, but with a smaller crest. I'm not going to be putting the plumes on absolutely everybody, but maybe this guy's like a specialist or a corporal. Also, I didn't know it at the time, and despite the simple modifications, this guy ended up being my favourite in the entire squad. Now, for our heavy weapon specialist, I wanted it to be clear he was an absolute veteran, so he comes from the Death Watch. Spent time there, came back. So what that means is he's going to have that left silver arm and then his right arm is going to have his chapter icon. Simple as that really. There's a great way to spruce up your squads by adding in Death Watch veterans here and there. Don't add too many otherwise it starts to look like a Death Watch army, but if you want a specialist here or there with Death Watch iconography, it's a great shout. I also used a resin shoulder pad I had lying about, don't know where from, and this Ultramarines icon that I stole from Kalgar. For the next guy, we're going to nick some stuff from the Stern Guard kit itself in the form of this Crux Terminatus that can normally sit on top of the Sergeant's backpack. As we've gone with the banner, we had this spare, so I cut it free of its moorings, basically the stuff that sticks it to the top of the backpack, and glued this on top instead. Just gives him a little more detail. Back to the Sergeant, I wanted to add a few little details, including this little book, which I thought could be like the hand guide to the Codex Astartes. You know how you go to like a hotel and there's a little Bible every time? It's like that, but for him. And then some scrolls, maybe something he's using to keep tabs on his team or whatever. I know they have computers in their helmets, but they do seem pretty old school in some areas. And then a few pouches and bits across the squad. One thing I wanted to add to this guy, who was otherwise pretty generic, was one of those transverse crests that a centurion would have worn in the Roman Empire. What does that make the hierarchy of this squad? Well, the sergeant's still obviously the sergeant, the specialist with the smaller one, and maybe this guy's the corporal instead with the transverse crest. But to be honest, I don't think it matters. They're all veterans, they can wear what they want. It just looks cool. So final quick review before we go on to the painting stage. My favorites are easily the sergeant, the gunner, and the guy we're calling the specialist. Though the guy with the transverse crest is also growing on me over time. Now as far as painting these Space Marines go, it's very similar to how you've seen me paint the other Space Marines on this channel, by using contrast paints. So what that means is we're starting with a white or grey primer. I'm starting with Ghoul Grey from Colourforge, as it's basically a colour match to Grey Seer, and it's you get more in the can for less price, you should just go for them really. Now in order to paint these, I'm starting with Talisar Blue Contrast Paint from Citadel and it is absolutely amazing. It is such a vibrant colour, I cannot believe I haven't used it before. To the point where I instantly decided that I'm probably going to have to do an Ultramarines Heresy Army 
I really don't need another Space Marine 40k army, I have like eight. So heresy army, we can do some ultramarines in the near future. The great thing about contrast paints is as well as being a really easy one coat base coat, it also adds a bunch of shadow that we can then build up on top of with our highlights and our own shadows later down the line. I view this as just an amazing way of making your model even more paint by numbers and you don't have to think too hard, it'll just tell you where to put the rest of your paints. So doing things in a slightly strange order, for some reason, I think I was basically just making sure this paint worked as a highlight, I'm using Baharoth Blue, which is basically the equivalent of Vallejo's Ice White Blue or Ice Blue, something like that, and doing an edge highlight all over the blue areas of the model. Normally I would save this till after I've done the recess shading, but I wanted to make sure this was the right colour. Essentially when you have something so vibrant as Telesar Blue as your base coat, you want to make sure that your highlight complements that rather than dulls it down. At least if you're painting the way I paint. I want any army I make, be it Blood Angels, Salamanders, Ultramarines, whatever, to be incredibly vibrant on the tabletop. Usually the terrain you're playing with is a bit dusty or whatever, and I mean dusty as in like intentionally dusty, not dusty from being on a shelf, though that can happen too. So I want my Marines to be as vibrant as possible so they pop on the table. Now going back to the step that is usually the first step, I'm using some Black Legion contrast paint on a small brush to do all of the recess shading. What does that mean? Going into all those panel lines across this miniature and also at the same time doing all the armor seals and joints. This I find really just helps amp up the contrast between the dark areas and the bright areas. You don't need it realistically if you wanted to, you could just do the Talisar blue coat, it does a good job at putting some shade in anyway, and it also does a pretty good job of adding some natural highlights, so you don't need to do either of the two steps that I've just gone through, but if you want to really make it pop and add a little bit more flair and character, you can do this. It's worth noting it is slow, but I think it's such a rewarding process because as you finish this recess shading step, the model just looks so good. I'm also using the same colour to base coat all the black areas outside of the armour, including the bolt rifle. Now that the armour is 100% done, we can move on to those other areas, including the pouches. I'm using a dark brown paint, Rhinox Hide from Citadel, but you can use whatever you like, to base coat all these pouches. I did consider doing these in black, but to be honest, I like having the extra colour and it breaks things up a little bit. I'm not just always painting blue or always painting black. Once I'd gotten nice coverage with that brown paint, I added a simple edge highlight all over those areas with a brighter brown. I'm using flat brown from Vallejo to highlight this Rhinox hide and I'm doing one simple highlight everywhere. And that's it, done. No shades, nothing, complete. Now for the tabards, I'm using a sandy colour initially here as my base layer. Normally I would use something like Xandri Dust or Steel Legion Drab, but there's a lot of parchment over these miniatures too, and I use the same method to paint that, and I don't want the tabards to look like paper. So I'm using Medium Sand from AK. It's quite a yellowy colour, so I'm going to dull this down in a bit with some applied washes. With quite a few of our base coats down, it's time to go in and tidy up those few areas that I spilled blue on that I shouldn't have. And this includes the helmet on this one guy, because I'd forgotten he was a veteran as I started to paint him, and also all of the shoulder pad trim, their first company veterans, they got white armour, and all of the ultramarine symbols. I also added this to a few of the Crux Terminatus, Crux Terminati, 
don't know what the plural of that would be, but on the knees and the other shoulder pads where applicable. Now for a step that doesn't look amazing on camera because you can't really see it as the light is shining directly on the miniature, but in real life makes a massive amount of difference. I'm adding an edge highlight of AK's silver gray to all of those white areas. Just again, increasing that contrast and making it look better because that base coat is gray. This is a pure white. Well, actually not really. It's still called silver gray, so it's not a pure white. I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't listen to me. The point is, it's a brighter grey, so it's going to add a nice bit of contrast to those helmets. And we will be doing a recess shade on the helmets in a bit that will also add some fun character and flair to it that ties it into the rest of the model. Now we need to make sure the sergeant has a red helmet with a white stripe down the centre. Now, fun fact from the No No Fear Horus Heresy book, there is a reason that Ultramarine sergeants all wear red helmets, and that is because Aenid Thiel was a sergeant under censure prior to the attack on Kalth by the word bearers. If you don't know much about Warhammer, firstly, congratulations on making it this far in the video, and secondly, that's going to sound like gobbledygook, but basically the Ultramarines were betrayed by a brother legion. Aenid Thiel was wearing a red helmet because he'd theorized about fighting other space marines, which was a big no-no at the time. However, it turns out that had a lot of practical application when the Ultramarines were betrayed, and he was very quickly, due to his heroic actions, elevated to a position of trust within the Primarch's inner circle. Gilliman then decided that it was a good idea to make sure their officers were marked out with red helmets, and so all sergeants started wearing red helmets from there, and 10,000 years later in the 41st millennium, sergeants still do. Our sergeant just has a white stripe down the centre because he's also a veteran. Story time aside, we're also adding a few red accents over the rest of the models, including the horsehair plumes, crests, whatever I'm calling them today, to add a nice bit of a pattern, and also all over those lenses that I've painted white in advance. Another base coat, which is another large area to cover, is all of the metallic areas. I'm going to be doing AK's Dark Aluminium, classic. It's always on this channel, isn't it? on all of those metal areas, except those areas that I want to be gold, which is the next step after this. One of the largest areas is that Death Watch arm, and we're going to be doing something slightly different rather than just covering it with Nolan Oil in a bit. Now, whilst those metallics dry, and as I've cleaned off my brushes, we're gonna go back to the tabards and add a nice wash in the form of contrast Agaros dunes. Why am I doing this? It's just to make sure everything's a bit duller and darkened down. While that dries on all the tabards, I'm going to be adding Null Oil to all of the metallic areas, and then starting on my gold base coats using Dragon's Gold from Duncan Rhodes, Two Thin Coats Painting Academy Paint Range. It's a nice gold dropper bottle paint, you should use it. The gold took a surprising amount of time to base coat, and, and all these secondary colours took a surprising amount of time. Normally you do the main armour of a Primaris Space Marine and you're done. And I've painted many Stern Guard, and I felt like these guys took the longest. All that aside though, it was a very enjoyable paint job, so if you enjoy painting, taking your time is really no problem. Whilst the gold dries, we're going to add a nice blue recess shade to all of those white areas that will allow me to. So basically the, the helmets. 
I'm using Calador Sky really thin down and running it into the recesses much like I did with the Black Legion over the blue armor earlier. This is very much a style choice. You can use a gray or if you're feeling really like brave, you can use a black, though black against white can be scary. I'm using a blue. I just think it looks good and ties in with the rest of the model. Continuing with some more detail work, we're going to add a couple of highlights to all of the bolt weapons and a few of those dark areas around the back of the gunner, including his tubing and some of the inner armor joints. For both these highlights, I'm doing a slightly chunkier one with AK's German Grey, followed up by the same brand's Basalt Grey as a sharp edge highlight over those areas that are closer to the sun. You'll generally find when a model has this much detail, you're gonna miss things, and I miss things pretty consistently. I needed to come back and do the lenses on several of the bolt weapons, as I'd forgotten about all the scopes. Next up was the parchment, and as mentioned earlier, I'm using Steel Legion Drab, followed by some sandy colors like Xandri Dust and Yushabti Bone. I'm gonna be using a few of these colors on the tabards, but as mentioned earlier, I, as I base coated the tabards in a different color, it's gonna look different to all that paper, so they're not just wearing paper around their belts though that is also a very 40k look. We're also making sure to add a healthy amount of burgundy as one of my favourite colours to all of these models over the purity seals and over the leather areas that aren't pouches, like the book. I also made sure to highlight a bunch of the red areas with Wild Rider Red, which is a nice bright orangey highlight which really helps pop. Don't forget to do the eyes. When layering up over the tabards, I'm making sure that I'm covering all those areas where the shade hasn't pulled in, just to add a lot of brightness and add a bit more depth to everything. few other details, I'm adding some top brass from the Two Thin Coats range on those shelves that seem to be prevalent all over the Stern Guard, including the little motifs in their reliquaries. Adding some highlights to a few of those detail areas, we're making sure to add some pink horror to all of the burgundy bits. This is quite a few steps up in terms of highlight, but it makes the leather look really sharp. I should probably say smart, not sharp, because in this making things look sharp is, is actually a big deal. It makes it look smart. After those layering steps that I mentioned with a bit of Xandri Dust and Yushabti Bone, we're also making sure to add some pale sand highlights to both the paper and the tabards. They'll look like they're in the same family, but the tabards should look like cloth now instead of that paper that I'm so worried about. So I mentioned we'd be doing something fun with the Death Watch arm. If you're a longtime member of the channel, you'll have seen this method many, many times, but it's using some thinned down Achillean green and putting it into the recesses and just anywhere that looks cool of the metallic area just on the arm, leaving the bolt weapon alone. Why do I do this? Because I think it looks cool, and because he's wearing blue armor, we can actually say this time it's reflecting the blue of his armor rather than like the blue of the sky or something. I just think it's a really cool effect to add some depth to all the metallics. I considered many different colors for the Ultramarine's power sword. I wanted to do green initially, but then I thought it would jar a little bit too much, so I ended up going with the classic blue. I also made sure to highlight all those gold areas after running a shade into them off camera. I'm using the standard Vallejo gold as my highlight colour for all the gold. It's in the name. And with that, most of the detail is done. We just have to highlight the power sword. I'm going straight to silver grey to make it look really sharp. This time I do mean sharp. And we're going to add a little bit of detail to the back banner in the form of a blue circle and a transfer. I marked out the circle in the usual way, creating a few dots at various intervals and then connecting them up with a line and filling everything in. You don't see me put the transfer on in this video, but you'll see it in the final reveal, so if you want to know how to put on transfers, I have a video linked in the top right. I had a wonderful time painting these models. Ultramarines are great fun, especially the veterans with all that white and blue matching up. It just is a match made in heaven, especially with the little bits of red. Oh, amazing. Really do recommend giving Talisar Blue a go. It's an amazing paint. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've been Sam. See you next time.